In common usage, theft is the taking of another person's property or services without that person's permission or consent with the intent to deprive the rightful owner of it. The word is also used as an informal shorthand term for some crimes against property, such as burglary, embezzlement, larceny, looting, robbery, shoplifting, library theft, and fraud obtaining money under false pretenses. In some jurisdictions, theft is considered to be synonymous with larceny, in others, theft has replaced larceny. Someone who carries out an act of or makes a career of theft is known as a thief. The act of theft is also known by other terms such as stealing, thieving, and filching. Theft is the name of a statutory offence in California, Canada, England and Wales, Hong Kong, Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, and the Australian states of South Australia, and Victoria. <laughs> Elements The actus royce of theft is usually defined as an unauthorized taking, keeping, or using of another's property which must be accompanied by a mens rea of dishonesty and the intent permanently to deprive the owner or rightful possessor of that property or its use. For example, if X goes to a restaurant and, by mistake, takes Y's scarf instead of her own, she has physically deprived Y of the use of the property which is the actus royce but the mistake prevents X from forming the mens rea i.e., because she believes that she is the owner, she is not dishonest and does not intend to deprive the owner of it so no crime has been committed at this point. But if she realizes the mistake when she gets home and could return the scarf to Y, she will steal the scarf if she dishonestly keeps it see theft by finding. Note that there may be civil liability for the torts of trespass to chattels or conversion in either eventuality. <laughs> by jurisdiction Canada Section 322 of the Criminal Code provides the general definition for theft in Canada 322. 1 Everyone commits theft who fraudulently and without colour of right takes, or fraudulently and without colour of right converts to his, her use or to the use of another person, anything, whether animate or inanimate, with intent. A to deprive, temporarily or absolutely, the owner of it, or a person who has a special property or interest in it, of the thing or of his property or interest in it b to pledge it or deposit it as security c to part with it under a condition with respect to its return that the person who parts with it may be unable to perform, or d to deal with it in such a manner that it cannot be restored in the condition in which it was at the time it was taken or converted. Sections 323 to 333 provide for more specific instances and exclusions. Theft from oyster beds s. 323. Theft by bailey of things under seizure s. 324. Exception when agent is pledging goods s. 325 Theft of telecommunications service s. 326 Possession of device to obtain telecommunication facility or service s. 327 Theft by or from person having special property or interest s. 328 Theft by person required to account s. 330 Theft by person holding power of attorney s. 331 Misappropriation of money held under direction s. 332 Exception for or taken for exploration or scientific research s. 333 In the general definition above, the Supreme Court of Canada has construed anything very broadly, stating that it is not restricted to tangibles, but includes intangibles. To be the subject of theft it must, however, be property of some sort. 
be property capable of being taken therefore intangibles are excluded, or converted and may be an intangible taken or converted in a way that deprives the owner of his, her proprietary interest in some way, because of this, confidential information cannot be the subject of theft, as it is not capable of being taken as only tangibles can be taken. It cannot be converted, not because it is an intangible, but because, save in very exceptional far-fetched circumstances, the owner would never be deprived of it. However, the theft of trade secrets in certain circumstances does constitute part of the offense of economic espionage, which can be prosecuted under S. 19 of the Security of Information Act for the purposes of punishment. Section 334 divides theft into two separate offenses according to the value and nature of the goods stolen. If the thing stolen is worth more than $5,000 or as a testamentary instrument the offence is commonly referred to as theft over $5,000 and as an indictable offence with a maximum punishment of 10 years imprisonment. Where the stolen item is not a testamentary instrument and is not worth more than $5,000 it is known as theft under $5,000 and is a hybrid offense, meaning that it can be treated either as an indictable offense or a less serious summary conviction offense, depending on the choice of the prosecutor. If dealt with as an indictable offense, it is punishable by imprisonment for not more than two years, and if treated as a summary conviction offense, it is punishable by six months imprisonment, a fine of $2,000 or both, where a motor vehicle is stolen. Section 333.1 provides for a maximum punishment of 10 years for an indictable offense and a minimum sentence of six months for a third or subsequent conviction, and a maximum sentence of 18 months on summary conviction. Hong Kong Article 2 of the Theft Ordinance provides the general definition of theft in Hong Kong. 1 A person commits theft if he dishonestly appropriates property belonging to another with the intention of permanently depriving the other of it, and thief and steal shall be construed accordingly. 2. It is immaterial whether the appropriation is made with a view to gain, or is made for the thief's own benefit. The Netherlands Theft is a crime with related articles in the wetbook van Strafrecht. Article 310 prohibits theft Dutch, diefstel, which is defined as taking away any object that partly belongs to someone else, with the intention to appropriate it illegally. Maximum imprisonment is four years or a fine of the fifth category. Article 311 consists of the following Part 1 Punishable with maximum imprisonment of six years or a fine of the fourth category is 1. Theft of cattle 2. Theft during certain emergency occasions 3. Theft during night in a residence by someone who is there without knowledge or permission of the owner 4. Theft by two or more organized people 5. Theft, where the thief got access by means of violence, climbing in, using false keys or disguise 6. Terroristic theft Part 2. When theft if committed as in 3 with the situation of 4 and 5, the punishment is a maximum imprisonment of 9 years or a fine of the fifth category. Article 312 consists of the following Part 1 prohibits robbery Dutch, barroving, which is defined as taking away any object with violence or with threat of violence. Maximum imprisonment is nine years or a fine with the fifth category. Part 2 allows maximum imprisonment of 12 years or a fine of the fifth category when 1. Robbery was committed during night, in a residence, on the public road or moving train. 2. Robbery was committed by two or more people. 3. Robbery was committed by violence, climbing in, false key or disguise 4. 
Robbery caused severe injury. 5. Robbery was terroristic. Part 3 allows maximum imprisonment of 15 years instead of 12 when robbery caused death to the victim. Article 314 consists of the following Part 1 prohibits poaching Dutch, which is defined as taking away without violence the following, clay, sand, earth, raw wood, fallen vegetables see the source for a complete list. Maximum imprisonment is one month or a fine of the second category. Part 2 increases the maximum imprisonment to two months when the crime is committed again less than two years after the first time. Article 315 increases the maximum imprisonment and fine category when poaching is done with vehicles and draft animals. Maximum imprisonment is three years or a fine of the fourth category. Republic of Ireland Theft is a statutory offence, created by Section 4 of the Criminal Justice, Theft and Fraud Offences Act, 2001. Romania According to the Romanian Penal Code a person committing theft can face a penalty ranging from 1 to 20 years, degrees of theft. Article 208, theft 1 to 12 years, when a person steals an object, or uses a vehicle without permission and no aggravating circumstances apply. Article 209, qualified theft 3 to 20 years aggravating circumstances 3 to 15 years, a by two or more persons together, b by a person in possession of a gun or a narcotic substance, c by a masked or disguised person, d against a person who cannot defend his or herself, e in a public place, f in a public transportation vehicle, g during nighttime, h during a natural disaster, i through burglary, or by using an original or copied key, j stealing national treasures, k stealing official identity papers with the intention to make use of them, l stealing official identity badges with the intention to make use of them, aggravating circumstances 4 to 18 years, a stealing petrol-based products directly from transportation pipes and vehicles or deposits, b stealing components from national electrification, telecommunication, irrigation network networks or from any type of navigational system, c stealing a siren, d stealing a public intervention vehicle or device, e stealing something which jeopardizes the safety of public transportation, aggravating circumstances 10 to 20 years, when the consequences are extremely grave and affect public institutions or the material stolen is worth over 200,000 ron approximately 80,000 United States dollars. United Kingdom <inaudible> England and Wales In England and Wales, theft is a statutory offence, created by Section 1 of the Theft Act 1968. This offence replaces the former offences of larceny, embezzlement and fraudulent conversion. The marginal note to section 1 of the Theft Act 1968 describes it as a basic definition of theft. Sections 1, 1 and 2 provide 1. 1. A person is guilty of theft, if he dishonestly appropriates property belonging to another with the intention of permanently depriving the other of it, and thief and «steal» shall be construed accordingly. 2. It is immaterial whether the appropriation is made with a view to gain, or is made for the thief's own benefit. Sections 2–6 of the Theft Act 1968 have effect as regards the interpretation and operation of Section 1 of that Act. Except as otherwise provided by that Act, Sections 2–6 of that Act apply only for the purposes of Section 1 of that Act. Appropriates 
Section 3 provides 1. Any assumption by a person of the rights of an owner amounts to an appropriation, and this includes, where he has come by the property innocently or not without stealing it, any later assumption of a right to it by keeping or dealing with it as owner. 2. Where property or a right or interest in property is or purports to be transferred for value to a person acting in good faith, no later assumption by him of rights which he believed himself to be acquiring shall, by reason of any defect in the transfer's title, amount to theft of the property. CRV Hinks and Lawrence v. Metropolitan Police Commissioner Property Section 4 provides that property includes money and all other property, real or personal, including things in action and other intangible property. Edward Griu said that Section 4 could, without changing its meaning, be reduced, by omitting words, to property includes all property. Sections 4 to 4 provide that the following can only be stolen under certain circumstances Land or things forming part of land and severed from it s. 4 2. Mushrooms growing wild on any land, or the flowers, fruit or foliage of plants growing wild on any land s. 4 3. Wild creatures or the carcasses of wild creatures s. 4, 4 Intangible property Confidential information and trade secrets are not property within the meaning of Section 4. The words, "...other intangible property", include export quotas that are transferable for value on a temporary or permanent basis, electricity Electricity cannot be stolen. It is not property within the meaning of Section 4 and is not appropriated by switching on a current. Cf. The offense of abstracting electricity under Section 13. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Belonging to another. Section 5: Belonging to another requires a distinction to be made between ownership, possession, and control. Ownership is where a person is not legally accountable to anyone else for the use of the property. Possession is where a person is only accountable to the owner for the use of the property, and Control is where a person is only accountable to two people for the use of the property, so if A buys a car for cash, A will be the owner. If A then lends the car to B Limited, a company, B Limited will have possession. C. An employee of B Limited then uses the car and has control. If C uses the car in an unauthorized way, C will steal the car from A and B Limited. This means that it is possible to steal one's own property. In R. V. Turner, the owner removed his car from the forecourt of a garage where it had been left for collection after repair. He intended to avoid paying the bill. There was an appropriation of the car because it had been physically removed but there were two issues to be decided. Did the car belong to another? The garage had a lien i.e. a proprietary right or interest in the car as security for the unpaid bill and this gave the garage a better right than the owner to possess the car at the relevant time. What was the relevance of Turner's belief that he could not steal his own property? The defense of mistake of law only applies if the defendant honestly believes that he has a right in law to act in the given way. Generalized and non-specific beliefs about what the law might permit are not a defense. Topic: <laughs> With the intention of permanently depriving the other of it. Section 6 with the intent to permanently deprive the other of it", is sufficiently flexible to include situations where the property is later returned. For example, suppose that B, a keen football fan, has bought a ticket for the next home match. T takes the ticket, watches the match and then returns the ticket to B. 
In this instance, all that T returns is a piece of paper. Its value as a license to enter the stadium on a particular day has been permanently lost. Hence, T steals the ticket. Similarly, if T takes a valuable antique but later repents and returns the goods, T has committed the actus royce with the mens rea. The fact that T's conscience forces a change of mind is relevant only for sentencing. Alternative verdict the offense created by Section 12 of the Theft Act 1968 is available an alternative verdict on an indictment for theft, visiting forces Theft is an offense against property for the purposes of Section 3 of the Visiting Forces Act 1952, mode of trial and sentence Theft is triable either way. A person guilty of theft is liable, on conviction on indictment, to imprisonment for a term not exceeding seven years, or on summary conviction to imprisonment for a term not exceeding six months, or to a fine not exceeding the prescribed sum, or to both. Aggravated theft The only offense of aggravated theft is robbery, contrary to Section 8 of the Theft Act 1968, stolen goods. For the purposes of the provisions of the Theft Act 1968 which relate to stolen goods, goods obtained in England or Wales or elsewhere by blackmail or fraud are regarded as stolen, and the words, "...steal", "...theft", and "...thief", are construed accordingly. Sections 22–24 and 26–28 of the Theft Act 1968 contain references to stolen goods. Handling stolen goods The offense of handling stolen goods, contrary to Section 22 of the Theft Act 1968, can only be committed, "...otherwise than in the course of stealing", similar or associated offenses. According to its title, the Theft Act 1968 revises the law as to theft and similar or associated offenses. See also the Theft Act 1978. Northern Ireland In Northern Ireland, theft is a statutory offence, created by Section 1 of the Theft Act Northern Ireland 1969. United States In the United States, crimes must be prosecuted in the jurisdiction in which they occurred. Although federal and state jurisdiction may overlap, even when a criminal act violates both state and federal law, in most cases only the most serious offenses are prosecuted at the federal level. The federal government has criminalized certain narrow categories of theft that directly affect federal agencies or interstate commerce. The Model Penal Code, promulgated by the American Law Institute to help state legislatures update and standardize their laws, includes categories of theft by unlawful taking or by unlawfully disposing of property, theft by deception fraud, theft by extortion, theft by failure to take measures to return lost or mislaid or mistakenly delivered property, theft by receipt of stolen property, theft by failing to make agreed disposition of received funds, and theft of services, although many U.S. states have retained larceny as the primary offense, some have now adopted theft provisions. Grand theft, also called grand larceny, is a term used throughout the United States designating theft that is large in magnitude or serious in potential penological consequences. Grand theft is contrasted with petty theft, also called petite theft, that is of smaller magnitude or lesser seriousness. Theft laws, including the distinction between grand theft and petty theft for cases falling within its jurisdiction, vary by state. This distinction is established by statute, as are the penological consequences. Most commonly, statutes establishing the distinction between grand theft and petty theft do so on the basis of the value of the money or property taken by the thief or lost by the victim, with the dollar threshold for grand theft varying from state to state. 
Most commonly, the penological consequences of the distinction include the significant one that grand theft can be treated as a felony, while petty theft is generally treated as a misdemeanor. In some states, grand theft of a vehicle may be charged as grand theft auto. See motor vehicle theft for more information. Repeat offenders who continue to steal may become subject to life imprisonment in certain states. Sometimes the Federal Anti Theft of Government Property Law 18 U.S.C. Section 640 is used to prosecute cases where the Espionage Act would otherwise be involved, the theory being that by retaining sensitive information, the defendant has taken a thing of value from the government. For examples, see the Amerasia case and United States v. Manning. Topic: <inaudible> Alabama. When stolen property exceeds the amount of $500, it is a felony offense. If property is less than $500, then it is a class A misdemeanor. Unlike some other states, shoplifting is not defined by a separate statute but falls under the state's general theft statute. Alaska The Alaska State Code does not use the terms, "...grand theft", or "...grand larceny". However, it specifies that theft of property valued at more than $1,000 is a felony whereas thefts of lesser amounts are misdemeanors. The felony categories class 1 and class 2 theft also include theft of firearms, property taken from the person of another, vessel or aircraft safety or survival equipment, and of access devices. Arizona. Felony theft is committed when the value of the stolen property exceeds $1,000. Regardless of the value of the item, if it is a firearm or an animal taken for the purpose of animal fighting, then the theft is a Class VI felony. California The Theft Act of 1927 consolidated a variety of common law crimes into theft. The state now distinguishes between two types of theft, grand theft and petty theft. The older crimes of embezzlement, larceny, and stealing, and any pre existing references to them now fall under the theft statute. There are a number of criminal statutes in the California Penal Code defining grand theft in different amounts. Grand theft generally consists of the theft of something of value over $950 including money, labor or property but is lower with respect to various specified property. Theft is also considered grand theft when more than $250 in crops or marine life forms are stolen, when the property is taken from the person of another, or when the property stolen is an automobile, farm animal, or firearm. Petty theft is the default category for all other other thefts, grand theft is punishable by up to a year in jail or prison, and may be charged, depending upon the circumstances, as a misdemeanor or felony, while petty theft is a misdemeanor punishable by a fine or imprisonment not exceeding six months in jail or both. Florida In general, any property taken that carries a value of more than $300 can be considered grand theft in certain circumstances. Georgia In Georgia, when a theft offense involves property valued at $500 or less, the crime is punishable as a misdemeanor. Any theft of property determined to be exceeding $500 may be treated as grand theft and charged as a felony. <inaudible> Hawaii Theft in the first or second degree is a felony. 
Theft in the first degree means theft above $20,000 or of a firearm or explosive, or theft over $300 during a declared emergency. Theft in the second degree means theft above $750, theft from the person of another, or agricultural products over $100 or aquacultural products from an enclosed property. Illinois Theft is a felony if the value of the property exceeds $300 or the property is stolen from the person of another. Thresholds at $10,000, $100,000, and $500,000 determine how severe the punishment can be. The location from which property was stolen is also a factor in sentencing. Kentucky KRS 514.030 states that theft by unlawful taking or disposition is generally a class A misdemeanor unless the items stolen are a firearm, anhydrous ammonia, a controlled substance valued at less than $10,000 or any other item or combination of items valued $500 or higher and less than $10,000 in which case the theft is a class D felony. Theft of items valued at $10,000 or higher and less than $1 million is a Class C felony. Theft of items valued at $1 million or more is a Class B felony, as is first offense theft of anhydrous ammonia for the express purpose of manufacturing methamphetamines in violation of KRS 218A.1432. In the latter case, subsequent offenses are a Class A felony. Massachusetts In Massachusetts, theft may generally be charged as a felony a lieu of stolen property is greater than $250. <laughs> Missouri Stealing is a felony if the value of stolen property exceeds $500. It is also a felony if the actor physically takes the property appropriated from the person of the victim, or the stolen property is a vehicle, legal document, credit card, firearm, explosive, U.S. flag on display, livestock animal, fish with value exceeding $75, captive wildlife, controlled substance, or ammonia. Stealing in excess of $25,000 is usually a Class B felony sentence, 5 to 15 years, while any other felony stealing not including the felonies of burglary or robbery that does not involve chemicals is a Class C felony sentence, up to 7 years. Non-felony stealing is a Class A misdemeanor sentence, up to 1 year. New York Grand larceny consists of stealing property with a value exceeding $1,000, or stealing a public record, secret scientific material, firearm, credit or debit card, ammonia, telephone with service, or motor vehicle or religious item with value exceeding $100, or stealing from the person of another or by extortion or from an ATM. The degree of grand larceny is increased if the theft was from an ATM, through extortion involving fear, or involved a value exceeding the thresholds of $3,000, $50,000, or $1 million. Vermont Grand larceny Value of goods exceed $900 13 VSA. Section 2501 Virginia Grand larceny Value of goods exceed $200 Virginia Code Section 18. 2–95 Washington State 
Theft of goods valued between $750 and $5,000 is second-degree theft, a Class C felony. Theft of goods valued above $5,000, of a search and rescue dog on duty, of public records from a public office or official, of metal wire from a utility, or of an access device, is a Class B felony, as is theft of a motor vehicle or a firearm. Australia Topic Actus Royce Victoria theft is defined in the Crimes Act 1958 Vic as when a person dishonestly appropriates property belonging to another with the intention of permanently depriving the other of it. The Actus Royce and Mens Rea are defined as follows: Appropriation is defined in Section 73 of the Crimes Act 1958 Vic as the assumption of any of the owner's rights. It does not have to be all the owner's rights, as long as at least one right has been assumed. If the owner gave their consent to the appropriation there cannot be an appropriation. However, if this consent is obtained by deception, this consent is vitiated. Property, defined in Section 71 of the Crimes Act 1958 Vic as being both tangible property, including money and intangible property. Information has been held not be property, belonging to another. Section 73 of the Crimes Act 1958 Vic provides that property belongs to another if that person has ownership, possession, or a proprietary interest in the property. Property can belong to more than one person. Sections 73 and 73 deal with situations where the accused receives property under an obligation or by mistake. South Australia theft is defined in Section 134 of the Criminal Consolidation Act 1935 as being where a person deals with property dishonestly, without the owner's consent and intending to deprive the owner of their property, or make a serious encroachment encroachment on the proprietary rights of the owner under this law encroachment on proprietary rights means that the property is dealt with in a way that creates a substantial risk that the property will not be returned to the owner or that the value of the property will be greatly diminished when the owner does get it back also where property is treated as the defendant's own property to dispose of disregarding the actual property owner's rights for a basic offense a person found guilty of this offense is liable for imprisonment of up to 10 years for an aggravated offense a person found guilty of this offense is liable for imprisonment of up to 15 years topic mens rea Victoria Intention to permanently deprive, defined at S.73 as treating property as it belongs to the accused, rather than the owner. Dishonestly, Section 73 of the Crimes Act 1958 creates a negative definition of the term dishonestly. The section deems only three circumstances when the accused is deemed to have been acting honestly. These are a belief in a legal claim of right, a belief that the owner would have consented, or a belief the owner could not be found. South Australia Whether a person's conduct is dishonest is a question of fact to be determined by the jury, based on their own knowledge and experience. As with the definition in Victoria, it contains definitions of what is not dishonesty, including a belief in a legal claim of right or a belief the owner could not be found. West Indies In the British West Indies, especially Grenada, there have been a spate of large-scale thefts of tons of sand from beaches. Both Grenada and Jamaica are considering increasing fines and jail time for the thefts. <laughs> Religious views and practices Islam 
In parts of the world which govern with Sharia law, the punishment for theft is amputation of the right hand if the thief does not repent. This ruling is derived from Surah 5 verse 38 of the Quran which states as to the thief, male or female, cut off his or her hands, a punishment by way of example, from Allah, for their crime, and Allah is exalted in power. This is viewed as being a deterrent. <laughs> Buddhism In Buddhism, one of the five precepts prohibits theft, and involves the intention to steal what one perceives as not belonging to oneself, what is not given, and acting successfully upon that intention. The severity of the act of theft is judged by the worth of the owner and the worth of that which is stolen. Underhand dealings, fraud, cheating and forgery are also included in this precept. Professions that are seen to violate the precept against theft are working in the gambling industry or marketing products that are not actually required for the customer. Topic: <laughs> Psychology. Possible causes for acts of theft include both economic and non-economic motivations. For example, an act of theft may be a response to the offender's feelings of anger, grief, depression, anxiety and compulsion, boredom, power and control issues, low self-esteem, a sense of entitlement, an effort to conform or fit in with a peer group, or rebellion. Theft from work may be attributed to factors that include greed, perceptions of economic need, support of a drug addiction, a response to or revenge for work-related issues, rationalization that the act is not actually one of stealing, response to opportunistic temptation, or the same emotional issues that may be involved in any other act of theft. The most common reasons for shoplifting include participation in an organized shoplifting ring, opportunistic theft, compulsive acts of theft, thrill-seeking, and theft due to need. Studies focusing on shoplifting by teenagers suggest that minors shoplift for reasons including the novelty of the experience, peer pressure, the desire to obtain goods that a minor cannot legally purchase, and for economic reasons, as well as self-indulgence and rebellion against parents. See also. Specific forms of theft and other related offenses. Equals equals notes. <laughs>